This is a newer version of the pushing down mental exercise. We love this exercise because it is extremely healing and it causes development, which is even better. The human body is polarized and by moving energy from your head to your feet, which is the entire exercise, um, it has a very powerful beneficial effect on the body. So we'll do the exercise right now and then I will speak about it and keep doing the exercise while I describe it in more detail. Okay, the, the exercise is quite simple. You become comfortable, have a seat or lie down preferably. You can do it while walking slowly, um, but it's a little more difficult because you have to keep your eyes sort of half closed. Ideally, you close your eyes and you imagine energy moving from the top of the head straight down to your feet and about two and a half feet below your feet. That is the entire exercise. That's it. Don't add anything to it, such as affirmations, um, prayers, preferably not. No. What you can do is certain visualizations. They will help you to imagine energy pouring down from your head to your feet very forcefully. This exercise is not particularly relaxing, although it does cause relaxation in the long term. But it will, um, it will be a forceful exercise. Forceful. Use of the will. You use your will to move the energy downward. Now, if you want to do a visualization, uh, for example, if you want to push down, you could imagine sitting or standing under a waterfall. Powerful waterfall, the biggest one you know. Some of you know Niagara Falls in New York, but there are many giant waterfalls and the energy is just crashing down the water, but it's, it's the flow of energy and there's a hole in the top of your head so it goes around your body but it also goes through your body and goes down to the feet. If your body is angled a little bit, well then the, it follows the body down from the head to the feet. You can also use your shower if you, as a visualization, but the water is crashing down. If you want to use an analogy of pulling the energy down, which I think is even more powerful, then you could imagine a magnet under your feet and it's pulling energy down. It's pulling energy down from the head all the way down to the feet, from above the head all the way down to the bottom of the feet and a little beyond, say two and a half feet beyond. You can imagine a vacuum cleaner at your feet, a gigantic vacuum cleaner. Or if you're inclined toward physics, you can imagine a black hole. Black hole sucks everything in and destroys it. But we're not doing that part. But there's a black hole and it's pulling out of everything down. This is the basic exercise. And this is it. This is it. Okay? So now, as I speak about the exercise, keep in mind that the exercise is moving energy from your head to your feet. Either you push it down or you pull it down. And that's the exercise. All right. In order to make this work very well, you want this to, to be sort of the center of your life. Moving energy down, moving energy down. Every time you take a walk, every time you take a step. And by the way, a very good way to visualize when you're walking is imagine your thumbs are being pulled downward and you walk with your thumbs down. You could do your fingers, but people often like their thumbs and they're being pulled, pull, 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 pull with every step. And it just moves the energy down from the head all the way down to your feet. This is one of the most powerful parts of the development program. One of the most powerful parts. Many people skip it and it's not a good idea. And it's not a good idea to substitute other meditations. This is not the same as the relaxing, calming um, type of meditations. 
And please avoid any mental exercise that moves energy upward. That's the worst. No, the energy has to move downward. Downward is what's called the yang direction, the grounding direction. And it's very important. This exercise was not part of Dr. Paul Eck's original uh, mineral balancing program. Just want to say that so there's no confusion and that you don't think that it was his, um, his work. It was not. I originally learned it um, from a man named Roy Masters and I learned it wrong, you might say. He has an exercise which is not bad, but it's not the same. But I did his exercise incorrectly because um, I just liked it this way. And um, it turns out that this is more powerful. This is more powerful. Okay. And it's a, quite a safe exercise unless you focus your energy on your head. And then you will get a headache. So if you're having any kind of tension in your head or a headache or tension in the body, it's generally because you are not focusing on your feet or below your feet. It is unusual to focus that way. Okay? But it is important to focus on your feet and just move the energy down as hard as you can, as hard as you can, as hard as you can. Pulling the energy, in my view, is a little bit more powerful. But you can push it and pull it and you can e even do both at the same time. Now, people ask, well, when do you do this exercise? You can do it any time. I don't recommend it um, at bedtime because often you'll fall asleep. You can use it to fall asleep, by the way, but it's better not to do it at bedtime. It's best to do it when you wake up or if you wake up in the middle of the night, it's excellent. You just lay there in bed and do it then. Um, you can do it at any time. I recall being on an airplane and couldn't really move, you stuck, stuck in there. And that was excellent because it's easy to become distracted and think, well, I'll get up and do something else. But when, you're, when you can't move, when you're uh, sort of trapped, it's easy. You say, okay, I'll do the exercise. Um, the body position for it is best either lying down or sitting. And you don't need a fancy sitting posture like the cross-legged or lotus posture or anything like that. Comfortable. Be comfortable with it. As I say, you can do it um, walking. Just standing still is difficult. But actually, if you are stuck in a line of people, say at a bank or a post office or a supermarket, you can do it there. You can do it there. That's okay too. Okay. And we discussed the basic exercise. Once again, you move energy forcefully from the head to the feet and not in any other direction. It's very tempting at times to say, well, I have a pain over in my nose here. I'll send the energy over, over to my nose, all of it there. Or I'll send the energy over to my, uh, my hand or someplace. Don't do that. The older exercise, we had you focus on your hand and then on both hands. But in fact, the energy just moves down, straight down. That's the only safe way to do this. That's very safe. Okay. Um, now, before you do the exercise, I suggest doing some spinal twists. It'll loosen up your body. Uh, if you're lying down, or you may have to lie down to do this. You lift one leg, you, your legs straight out, hands at your sides, or hands, arms out. And you lift one leg and you twist it over the other leg. Bring your leg back, lift the other leg, twist it over that leg. That loosens up the, the spine. You can also pop your toes. You simply grab your foot, the toes, and you push down. Push the top of the toes down. And they should pop. A lot of people, they will. Some of them will. Um, you can also grab, if you're lying down, you can grab 
you can bend one leg, grab your, your ankle of the one that's bent and pull it toward you. And it will often pop a little bit. And that opens up the knee joint. And then put that one down, lift, bend the other knee, grab that leg around the ankle and pull. Pull sort of sharply and gently but sharply. And you can um, uh, pop the knee. It helps loosen these joints. Another thing to do is to turn your head from side to side. That will tend to loosen the neck a little bit. Um, another uh, twist is you lift your arms above your head and you pull to the one side and then you pull to the other. That will tend to loosen the shoulders. You can also put your hands behind your head and pull to one side and then pull to the other side. This is a simple idea but it helps move the energy because the energy gets stuck in the joints. The energy gets stuck in the joints. Okay, now let's talk about more of the visualizations because they're wonderful and they will help you. And there are many of them because each person has a different life experience. And so one person may relate to one exercise and one person may relate to the other. Um, for example, among the pulling down exercises, we mentioned that one of them is to imagine a magnet, a very powerful magnet, one of those giant electromagnets maybe, that they lift up cars with, if you've ever seen those. They have them in the junkyards. And you imagine that that thing has been turned on and it's just pulling everything down. It's right under your feet. It's about two feet under your feet, two and a half feet under your feet, and it is pulling everything downward, everything, everything, everything. It pulls your nose downward, pulls your hair downward, pulls your chin downward, your teeth downward, your hands, your fingers, your fingernails, everything. And of course your feet and your toes, everything gets pulled powerfully downward. Another one that um, I like is the rack. Uh, they, this was a medieval torture machine. And what they did is they held your head and then they hooked up um, ropes or wires uh, to your feet. And you can imagine wires or ropes to your feet and then someone is pulling on it. Someone pulls on it. They had a big wheel that they turned. Um, and just pulling everything down. Pull, pull, pull. Opens you up. Opens you up. You come out two inches taller. That's another visualization. Uh, we mentioned the black hole. Some people are interested in astronomy and black holes. This is a ring. It looks like a ring. It's round. And you imagine one of these a couple feet below your feet. And it's just pulling everything in. And you're having a hard time not being completely sucked in. Completely. Another one, another visualization is a wind tunnel. Some of you have seen these things in operation. Uh, they use them to test the aircraft and it's a big fan and it generates um, a flow of air up to 500 miles an hour and or more. And so you imagine that you've got one of these fans down below your feet and it's pulling the air. The air flows from your head to your feet and it's just pulling everything down, pulling everything down. Okay. Now, in addition, um, th there would be others um, that are a little less, uh, I don't know, they're a little simpler ones. For example, you might imagine that you've got on a pair of very tight pants and you're having a lot of trouble getting them off and you have two friends and one friend is on one foot and one friend is at the other foot and you're holding on to your bed or something and you tell them, pull, pull, pull. And you're pulling down and pulling down and pulling down. And it feels like they're just going to tear you apart. But that's what you have to do. Okay? You could also imagine having a tight pair of boots. And you can't get them off. And you've got one friend pulling on one boot on one side. And one friend pulling on the other side. And again, you're holding on uh, to a bedpost or something. 
or two bedposts, and they're just pulling, pulling, pulling. And that's the feeling. That's the feeling. Okay? Could even be for women that you've got, you're putting on a very tight gown and, and you can't get it on. And you, you have some friends and they pull from below. <laughs> very tight. They pull from below. Yes. So that's the feeling. That's the feeling. And there are other things. If you are religiously oriented, the Lord's Prayer is, Thy will be done on earth as it already is done in heaven. And so this is an, a form of active prayer. And you pull heaven down to earth. That is the proper way to pray, by the way. It's not to go up there. No. No. It doesn't say that. In the Lord's Prayer it says, Thy will be done here as it is already done there. You bring it down to here and you bring it down forcefully, as forcefully as you can. You can say, I want more of God, more of God, more of God, more of God. Yes, that's how to do it. And that's very powerful and very excellent. You pull it down, pull God down. Another variant on that is to imagine that you're the bride of Christ, and that can be a man or a woman, and you pull Christ down, pull him down, pull him in, pull him right inside of you. That's how you do it. Another exercise that some people like is to imagine um, sort of a, a string or a wire. It's connected sort of to your belly button, but inside. And it's being pulled down. It's a cord. You pull it down and it just pulls your insides, pulls your insides down. Okay? Or maybe you have heavy earrings and it pulls your ears down, pulls everything down. But those are some of the um, visualizations. A powerful one is to think of a vacuum cleaner, a large shop vacuum cleaner or something, under your feet, about two and a half feet down, and someone turns this thing on. And, oh my gosh, it's just pulling everything. It pulls your socks off, pulls your clothes off. Pulls off everything. Might even pull your eyes out of their sockets. Pulls your ears off. That's how powerful it is. Okay. A very powerful one is to imagine a tornado. It's called the tornado visualization. And this gets into a little more um, sophistication. But the tornado is a funnel cloud and it's wide at the top and it gets narrower as it goes down. And you can imagine, and it goes from the sky to the earth. So it goes from your head to your feet. And you can imagine a, a funnel cloud, a tornado, and it's coming from your head down to your feet. As it does, not only does it go down, but it swirls to the right, swirls to the right, and it gets narrower, okay? That's a powerful one. That's a very powerful exercise to imagine a, a tornado and it's coming down and it's swirling to the right and it's getting smaller. It's getting, um, the, the, the cloud is getting thinner and smaller as it comes down. Okay. <laughs> There's another one similar. Imagine you're wearing a robe. And again, this robe is moving down around you and it's moving to the right as well. It's moving to the right as well. Now when you do this, a good idea is to empty the mind. You will get a headache if you don't do that. In other words, don't be thinking about things. You, yes, do the visualization, but your energy is, your attention is on your feet. It's not really on your brain. You know, it's not about thinking. It's not about thinking about um, too much. It's mostly just the energy. If you want to call it God, if you want to call it heaven, whatever you want to call it, that's fine, but it's the energy. It's not some concept, particularly. And so it helps 
um, it helps to just empty your mind. The more you empty the mind, the entire exercise is an emptying process. The entire exercise is, is somewhat of an emptying. And that allows a new energy to enter, which we'll talk about. But the entire exercise is an emptying process. Now something else that may help is something called toe breathing. It may help, it may be a complication you don't want to bother with. But you can imagine that as you do this exercise, you can breathe in through your toes and then you breathe out through your toes. Don't do other breathing. Don't do other breathing exercises. It's not necessary for this. Okay. As you do the exercise, you will pass through certain phases. Usually, um, in the beginning, the mind is chaotic and busy and active and distracted. And it may be difficult to do this at first. Just keep at it. And after a little while, the mind tends to calm down. I used to find I would think of things to do. People I had to call up, things to do in the early part of doing the exercise. Before that, the mind was too distracted. I forgot about all that. But then it comes up. And if you want, you can write those down. And then keep going. And then slowly the mind calms down and calms down more and more. Get sort of into the, the rhythm of it, into the swing of it. Um, I used to call it getting the motor going because it kind of feels like that, this energy moving through. And then there is a feeling of sort of emptiness will set in. This may not all happen immediately. It may take weeks or months. That's okay. This, that's okay. Everybody goes at their own pace. And that's a later stage. You just feel kind of empty and you're just doing this exercise. Okay. Now, there are exercises where you push down. And sometimes those are helpful too. For example, you can imagine um, a wood screw. You know what they look like. They're kind of, um, they have a thread and it threads to the right as it goes down and it gets narrower. And you can imagine this in your head. And it just goes right through your body, down, twisting to the right, down, 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 down. It's like you're getting screwed to a piece of wood or something. Okay. You can imagine that you're a sponge, that you're made out of spongy material, and you just squish the sponge and push your head all the way down to your feet. Just push all the way down, everything. Down under your feet even. We mentioned another pushing exercise to imagine that you're lying, you're standing under a waterfall or sitting under a waterfall um, or lying in a river and water is pushing you, it's pushing right through you, pushing right through you. For women, and I suppose a man could do it as a visualization, but for women, you might imagine you're delivering a baby. You might imagine you're delivering a baby and it's a very difficult delivery. Uh, and so you have to push really hard. And you push straight down in this case. You push straight down. That may not be the case delivering a baby. But in this case, you push straight down between your legs. But you start at your head. You push everything down. Everything goes down, 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 down. And another one would be, imagine heavy weights. Weights on your hands, weights on your feet, around your ankles. And it just weighs you down. Everything just goes down, down, down. All right, maybe that's enough visualizations. Um, there are some other suggestions. You can do the exercise with another person. And that can help because as you do it, a certain amount of energy um, flows and another person sitting next to you or standing next to you or lying next to you will feel that. And so if you have another person there, uh, that can make it easier. That can make it easier. That can make it easier. You can do it hugging another person. Um, there is an exercise called down sex and you can do it while you're doing that. Move energy down. 
The other person moving the energy down will help you move the energy down. You moving the energy down will help the other person move the energy down. That's how it works. So you can do it with others. You can do it in a group, in a class. That's another way to do it. Everybody's sitting on chairs. Um, you can sit on the floor, but it's uncomfortable. For mo most people, it's uncomfortable. Um, chair is okay. Okay. Now I'll go through just some, some questions that, that come up. Um, if the energy won't move down to your feet, you just stay with it. Little by little, you'll see. All of a sudden, one day, oh, the energy is moving through my knees better, or the energy is moving through my hips better. You're going to find that there are blockages. The energy may not move through your shoulders very well. It'll get stuck. And sometimes it, the energy will warm up your shoulder, and then all of a sudden it moves through. That's how it happens. Because in fact, we are opening channels, energy channels, and um, the channels are blocked. They're either crushed or they're toxic. They're, they're filled. And slowly, as you push down, they open. And remember to do that spinal twist. Matter of fact, I stop and do it a number of times when I'm doing it, the exercise, which is good to do for at least half an hour. An hour is even better at a sitting. Um, but it's good to do this, to stop for a minute and do the twists because you'll find that the, the joints will tighten up. The joints will tighten up and it's very good to release them. Okay. What about distractions? Well, they will come up. They will come up. You'll start thinking about what to have for dinner or, oh, you have to call somebody or something else. Start thinking about something. Try to just realize that, that you're thinking about something and then go back to the exercise. Don't pay too much attention. And don't pay too much attention to um, psychic phenomena and strange things that come up. It's very easy to do that. You can get all caught up. Oh my gosh, you know, I saw lights. You know, I heard music or something. Don't. Just keep pushing down. Go back to the pushing down exercise. That's the best thing to do with all distractions. And of course, especially when you begin doing this, but anytime, set things up so there are as few distractions as possible. As few distractions as possible. At times you will get discouraged. You'll think, I'm not really doing it right. I'm not making any progress. Most people think that at times. That's okay. Our experience is you are always making progress. Every time you do the exercise, you are sorting up, sort of blazing a trail and you are making progress. So don't get caught up in the illusion that, oh, I'm not doing it right. I'm not making any progress. Nothing feels different. You are making progress. If you do the exercise and do it forcefully, if you do it mechanically and you don't put much energy into it, it won't do much. But if you do it sort of as though it's the first time each time and really push, uh, you will make progress at all times, at all times. Another problem that comes up is upsetting thoughts, you know, very angry thoughts, very depressing thoughts. Um, it could be weird thoughts, you know, perverse thoughts. And you think, oh, you know, what's wrong with me? Or where did this come from? Once again, try to let them go. Realize, first of all, they may not be your thoughts. You may have learned them from someone else or picked them up from someone else. And you don't know when. It could have been 10 years ago or 20 years ago, 30 years ago. And so don't take them on. Watch the thoughts. Like watching a cloud pass across the sky and it just kind of fades away. Just watch them and just say, oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. And leave it there. Don't read a lot into it. Don't say, oh, that must be my unconscious. and I must have dreamed about this. Don't do that. Just observe the thoughts, no matter how upsetting they are, and they will pass. They will pass. And generally speaking, if you do it correctly, they may come up a few times and then 
they will tend to leave and you'll be done. You'll be done with, those, with that thought. But we all carry um, sometimes hateful thoughts and angry thoughts and fearful thoughts. And they may come up at times. Memories may come up. Um, and the memories may not all be good. Again, try to just observe them. Try to just observe them. Obviously, if it's so bad that you can't, well, then you can stop and you can get up and stretch, do the spinal twists, and, um, uh, and, and then go back to it later. But as a general rule, um, they're not going to hurt you. The thoughts are not going to hurt you. And they're not yours. Remember that. Many thoughts, uh, our bodies are like radios, radio receivers, and we pick up the thoughts of others. We definitely do. Some people know that. They, they're around other people, they start thinking strange thoughts. So in that case, don't worry about it. Don't, don't take it on. Okay. Um, it does take some persistence and patience and you have to love yourself through it and realize that you're undoing a lot. You're undoing a lot. Okay. Now we'll, we'll talk a little more about some benefits. And while I'm doing this, please keep doing the exercise. Keep moving the energy down. Either push it down past your feet or pull it down from your feet. But focus on your feet. Either way, focus on your feet. All right. General effects of this exercise. Although the exercise itself is not that calming, but the mind will calm down. The more you do the exercise, the more your mind will calm down. We also mentioned that it brings in a new energy. It brings in a set of souls that are very healing, and it brings in a much better energy. Through the seventh energy center, it brings in a much purer, more helpful energy. Most people's energy is influenced by their body. You know, your stomach is giving you messages, I'm hungry, I want to eat. Um, other parts of your body are telling you other things. You know, that's not really ideal. This is more like a divine energy. It comes from above, goes down through your head and then down into the body. It's a very, very wonderful energy. It is an etheric energy or a subtle energy. Um, the discipline that you learn by doing this exercise just every day is wonderful. The discipline is wonderful. It is called power. It is a type of power over yourself. You'll see this. You'll also begin to be able to broadcast energy, which is very interesting. To be able to broadcast energy. I mentioned that it is very healing. The energy goes to parts of the body that need healing. They usually warm up. Then they, then they cool down as, as the energy moves through. But it, it gets rid of blockages. Moving energy from the head to the feet, moving it through the joints and other places, that's basic healing. It's basic healing. Many of the procedures that we recommend on this website are designed to enhance that. Whether it's the, uh, the coffee enema, the sauna, the spinal twist, rubbing the feet. They all enhance moving energy down. It's very basic. Okay? And it's very important to actually do this exercise. Some people think, well, I'll just read about it, and um, that's enough. No, it doesn't work. It is not an intellectual exercise at all. It is not an intellectual exercise. Um, it will make your mind sharper. Most people are distracted most of the time. Most people are thinking about different things all the time. And as you learn to focus your attention, gain control of the mind, you will find your mind much more powerful. You'll find your ability to concentrate is much better. You'll find that your ability to remember things is better because you, you will bring more of your mind to whatever you're doing. So there are great mental benefits. Emotionally, it, it's very stabilizing because the brain is rather stable. The body is unstable. The body is an emotional thing and um, if that goes up to your mind then you're emotional. This brings in a calm, quiet, peaceful energy which has great emotional benefits. Um, there are benefits for what are called the subtle bodies or the subtle energy fields. 
it helps balance out what are called the seven physical energy centers, or, um, yeah, well, that's what they're called, the seven energy centers on the physical body. It balances them, it spins them correctly. They spin their energy centers. And it um, helps them to open and to be brighter and uh, healthier. Another benefit is uh, this exercise tends to help get rid of stray souls that attach to the body. We call them entities. And they, it helps get rid of those. And that's very, very helpful. Many people are full of these things. And they influence your thinking. And they influence your decisions. And they influence the way you feel. This gets rid of them. Often these souls belong to bodies who were um, who were here, but the body has passed, but the souls didn't leave. And so they're floating around and then they attach to people. Helps get rid of them. The exercise can bring up traumas and release it very gently. That's another benefit. The exercise can bring up traumas and release it, release them painlessly. Okay. And as I speak, do the exercise. Push down, pull down as hard as you can. Um, the exercise acts as, um, can act as therapy. It's sort of like talking to a therapist. Only you're talking to God or your higher self or Jesus or some, somebody, Holy Spirit. You're, you're talking to somebody who's above you, but who's a friend, and you bring that person's energy in. And that person acts as a third party, a kind of a neutral party or a second party. In a relationship it would be a third party. And it's very healing. As I say, it's sort of like talking to a therapist. And the exercise tends to balance and strengthen and harmonize your personality. It has a powerful effect in that way. Okay. A final topic that I'll mention and all these topics are discussed in the article called the Pushing Down Mental Exercise or the Pushing Down Exercise. I'm sort of summarizing. But the final topic will be retracing because this is important and it's a little scary for people. We've really mentioned the idea. But sometimes, as you do this exercise, you will go back. You will have memories of things or aches and pains. In other words, it can be mental memories or it could be physical memories, meaning a part of the body might start hurting that hurt 20 years ago. That's called retracing. And it's a very important part of healing. It's deep healing. That's what it is. It's deep healing. Nutritional balancing science, development science, causes this. Other healing sciences do not cause it as much. That's because they're not as deep. But any very deep science will cause retracing. Any deep healing will cause retracing. Retracing is not always fun, unfortunately, but it is important and necessary and it goes away, it's temporary. So don't be surprised if now and then uh, a part of your body starts hurting. It could be your knee, you know, ankle, elbow, anything, your eyes. Don't be surprised if um, memories surface. That would be mental retracing. The first was physical retracing. You can get a stomach ache, you can get a headache. That's all physical. Could be emotional retracing. All of a sudden, you feel terribly angry, or awfully depressed, or very, very sad. Very sad. You might start crying for no reason, no apparent reason. That would be emotional retracing. And then there is spiritual retracing, which is where you realize that you got cut off from your higher self or God or Christ or the, the, uh, the radiant one, the energy of the one. And you slowly reconnect. And there's a certain sadness and a certain remorse perhaps because you realize you've been cut off. It's like being cut off from your friends, a special friend. And it can cause confusion. You might see that 
the job you thought was so wonderful, well, it isn't really that wonderful. And that's hard because you've invested time and energy in it. Now and then, relationships have to be changed, looked at differently. All of a sudden, you realize things that you didn't know before, that you didn't see it. So that's part of what, what I would call spiritual retracing. It's sort of mental also, but it goes a little deeper. Um, you, you may have to look at many things in your life, your friends, for example, how you spend your time, how you spend your money, all these things. This can come up, and it can be rather upsetting. And we have people who quit. They say, I don't want to look at that. I don't want to look at these things. It's not fun. I just want to live my life. Well, then you never really get well. And you have to understand, if it comes up, it's because somebody wants you well, your soul, if you want to call it that, or the Holy Spirit, wants you really to get well. And in order to really get well, you need to look at these things. <clears throat> you don't have to judge them. You don't have to judge anyone. Matter of fact, don't. Don't judge. Just look at it and say, oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's interesting. And you will need to, <clears throat> at times you will need to take action. If you don't take action, it will keep coming up for you. It will keep coming up for you. And you'll probably quit the exercise. Try not to do that. Instead, gently move forward and take some action. You can always check with the Holy Spirit. Ask, Father, is this the best thing for me to do? Is this the best thing for me? What should I do? What should I do? And you'll get answers. Not always immediately. Don't, Im don't imagine you will get answers immediately. And so this is the concept of, it's really personality integration, healing, and development. And this is part of this exercise. Okay, I think with that, we will conclude this exercise.